I'm going to show you three different ways to improve the quality of your SDXL or your LoRa trained images using Flux. Stick around to the end, I've got two bonus ideas that I'm going to share with you as well. Now, Flux has only been out a few days, but some of the art that people are creating with it is pretty fantastic. You can see some examples over here at Pixel Dojo on the community gallery. Now, there have been over 30,000 images created in just the last two or three days since this has been out, which is pretty mind blowing. So definitely stop over and check some of those out when you get a chance. What I want to show you today, though, is how to take your SDXL or your even SD images and upload those into something called image to image. If you haven't used that before, what it does is it essentially takes an input image and then applies a stable diffusion model over on top of it. In this case, we're using Flux Pro. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the main menu here to the Create tab, and you're going to see this option for Flux Image to Image. You simply click on Upload. You can upload an image, or if you've already got some saved to your personal gallery here, you can go ahead and load those up. In my case, I've got this image of this blue Ferrari that was created using Stable Diffusion XL. I'm going to go ahead and just put in the prompt blue Ferrari, and then you'll notice this prompt strength slider. Now what this does is essentially it's the amount that the image is changed once you send it through image to image. If you start very low with a very low prompt strength, what it's gonna do is it's gonna make very subtle changes to your image. This is great if you wanna retain most of those original details, but you wanna add just a little bit better styling. Now, if you go all the way up to 1.0, so if you crank this all the way up to the top, you're gonna completely destroy the original image. This is gonna be 100% just prompt based and it's just gonna generate an image of a blue Ferrari. So we're gonna go somewhere in between. I'm gonna start with around 0.55. We'll click generate and we'll see what comes back. Now, this is using Flux Pro in the back end, so it's very fast, but it's also really, really high quality, something you can't even run on a home GPU at this point. And here's our first result. Now you'll notice a few changes here right off the bat. If you look at the Ferrari emblem on the front, it looks a little bit more refined in the Flux image. The horse on the front is very much more refined. The headlights are a little bit different. There's this different deal on the hood here. And you'll notice the front end of the car also has some changes. Looking down at the sidewalk, the sidewalk has different textures. And in the back, you can see the houses have completely changed. This was set in Portugal. So you can see some of the kind of Portuguese styling that comes through this. So a lot of little details have changed. A lot of things have been cleaned up. Now, if you go and you crank this up even higher, let's go 0.8, for example, and we'll generate another image. And now you'll see that there are pretty drastic changes that are starting to happen. The entire background of the scene has changed and the car has quite a few changes as well. You can see the sidewalks and everything else are also completely different. So we're getting to a point where it's using more of that prompt to change the image and you're losing all of the details from that original image, which sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's not. Now, if we go all the way to the extreme on the other end, we drop this down to let's say 0.2, we should get something that resembles quite closely the original image. And here we can see that it's much more subtle, the differences here. So you look, the sidewalk's about the same. The background is very similar. You get the houses in the back that are still the same as the original. And now the car looks like it's almost identical, but you still get those enhancements that you were hoping for, like the better Ferrari horse on the front of the car. Now, here's the really cool part is you can go ahead and save this image or you can click on the download button. You can download it to your own computer, do whatever you want with it. Or if you click on save, it goes over to my images and then you can use it in all of the other tools over here on Pixel Dojo. So for example, we can go to the creative upscaler and you can simply see that your image is right here. We'll click on it. That loads it into the upscaler and then you can just click on upscale. This is going to more than double the resolution. You can actually, if you go to the advanced options, you can up to 8x the resolution of the image. And depending on how much creativity you give it, you can also add new enhancements and details to it as well. We'll take a look at this before and after. And you can see it just adds a bunch more detail. Look at the clarity of that left headlight, for example, on the vehicle, the background, everything else. It refines the faces of the people really does a nice job here. And again, it more than doubles the resolution. So then you can go here and you can just save this new upscaled image. And now you've got a really nice high quality version of this image that you just started with a standard SDXL image. All right, moving on to number two is LoRa training. Now you can't really do LoRa training on Flux just yet. 
You kind of can, but you're going to need an insane amount of GPU power. In fact, for the trainings that I've seen, it's around 80 gigabytes. I'm running this on an NVIDIA H100 for Pixel Dojo, so it's possible to do that, but I think it's going to be rather expensive to train Allura, at least for now. So what we do is we can go over to the style trainer. You can check out my videos. I show you how to do either a person, a style, or an object, Laura, that you can train here on Pixel Dojo. Usually takes about eight to 10 minutes to train a Laura from start to finish. And then once you're done, you can go to the style image creator. And this uses stable diffusion, but what you can do is you can see your custom styles that you've created. I'll go ahead and click on one of them and I'll generate an image. You can see that it preloads your token that you've specified for your Laura, so you don't even have to think about it. And we can go ahead and add in some extra details. So in this case, the prompt will be ale map. That's the token that I use sitting in a modern cafe, typing on her laptop. She looks focused, cup of coffee with a laptop logo on the table. We'll go ahead and click and generate four images using my Laura. You can see it's loading the Laura up and then it's going to train the images using SDXL. All right, and here we've got our four images trained with our Laura model. I happen to like these last two quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click save for both of these. Again, it's going to save them to my images and I'll show you what we're going to do next. Now we can jump on over and we can go into flux image to image. So we're starting with these SDXL images again. We'll grab this first one. We'll do a little bit lower on the guidance and we'll just say photo, click on generate, and it's just gonna enhance our image. It's not gonna change the details too much, but it's gonna add some enhancements to it, running it through Flux Pro. And here you can see it's pretty subtle, but you can look at some of the differences here. The watch is a little bit better. Some of the buttons are more defined on the shirt. You can see that you can't really see the buttons over here on the SDXL, but on the Flux model you can. Coffee cup's a little more refined. You'll notice the fingers are definitely better on the Flux model. You couldn't even really see fingernails on this left-hand side image. Things like the necklace and the earrings are also improved and just the overall texture and quality of all of the things around. Look at this person's face over here in the background. It's really undefined in the SDXL version, which you'll notice happens all the time when you have somebody that's a little farther away. Same with this gentleman over here. He doesn't even really have a face. But you can see in the Flux version, he has a well-defined face, as does this person over here and this woman sitting at the bar. So it really takes and refines all of those little fine details without completely destroying and changing that image. So we can save this newly updated one. And then again, we'll jump on over to the Creative Upscaler and we'll just grab that newly created image and we'll go ahead and upscale this 2x. So now we'll have a 2048 by 2048 image from an original Laura that was created with SDXL, sent through Flux, and then upscaled. Really cool stuff. And here we have that upscaled image. You'll notice just a little bit more refinement. Look at the facial features, especially around the eyes. Significantly better after the upscaling. Again, with the background and everything else, just really tightened up and refined over what it was before. And you'll see that you can see this full size image here, 2048 by 2048. And we just started with that basic SDXL Laura. Really cool stuff. Now, you can also go to the advanced section and you can change all the settings here if you want to make some changes, manipulate how it comes back. The resemblance it really just defines how much the original image is retained when it's upscaled. So I usually make this pretty high when I want to retain what I had from that original Laura. And then you want to keep the creativity low. If you put this up higher, what it does is it starts to add new details to the image, which you might not particularly want. The other cool thing you can do here though, and I told you there were going to be a couple of bonuses. So here's one of them. You can change the style. So by default, it's just going to create a kind of higher resolution version of the image that you started with. But you can see there's a whole bunch of other really cool things here. You can do cartoon style, cyberpunk, architecture, watercolor, sci-fi. So if we went for cyberpunk, for example, and you upscale this image, you're gonna get a completely different look. It adds a lot of that extra creativity to the original image. And here we go, completely different and changed image. Lots of cyberpunk details. Look at the coffee cup, the laptop, lots of neon glowing lights, all the things you'd kind of expect from a weird kind of cyberpunk dystopian future. Even the people in the background and everything else are changed pretty significantly. 
And one more tip, once you're done upscaling, don't forget to download or save the image just so you've got it and you can use it later. Now, if you've saved the image, you can go to explore my images and you can see all of the images that you've created in the past and all the ones that you've saved. One of the cool things you can do here too is you can go ahead and just click this button up here in the right. You can see there's a lock that makes it private. And if it's unlocked, that means it's public. So you can go ahead and either change these images to be public or private. If they're public, they're up in the community gallery. So the whole world can see them, check them out, and share in some of the cool artwork that you've created. If you click on one of these, you can actually see who created it. And then you can go to that person's personal gallery. So we'll go to mine, and you can see all the images that I've created using Flux, Stable Diffusion, and everything else. But I said there were a couple other bonuses, so let's jump into those too. This has to be one of my favorite tools at Pixel Dojo is the magic lighting, and I'll show you why. You can take one of these images that we set up earlier, so we'll grab this one of Map on the laptop, and you can select a preset. So we're gonna go for, let's say, Sunny Outdoor, and we're gonna go ahead and we're not gonna touch anything else. We're just gonna leave all of it alone, but we will change the number of images generated up to four, and we'll just click on Generate. What this does is it runs the image through a stable diffusion, but it changes not just the lighting in the image, but it also changes the background. So you can change the setting for someone and one of your characters. And you can see you've still got that original image, the look of it, but it's completely changed. The background, the lighting, everything. Really natural lighting and shadows, contrast, completely gives it a different look. This is really cool if you wanna just create something and then play around with sort of the scene and everything else without having to generate an entirely new image. Now, you don't have to just use the presets that I've defined here. You can literally go and adjust everything. So instead of the preset sunny outdoor, which by the way, it sets the prompt person standing in a sunny park, detailed face, high resolution, bright sunlight, you could add whatever you want here. So you could say in front of the castle at Disneyland, and it's going to generate an image that places the person there and kind of has that type of lighting. And check this out. Now they're in front of the Disney castle. You've got completely different lighting background. They're still at the coffee shop. Really, really cool here. And you can go ahead and of course, save these to your public gallery. And this brings us to our last, but certainly not least impressive way to use Flux for all of your workflows. What makes this so powerful is that you don't have to be a prompt master. You don't have to be someone who knows exactly how to write a really great prompt. You can come in and you can just describe what you want to create. So we'll say a dog driving a go-kart, and then you've got some additional parameters that you can pass to this. So this uses in the background a custom large language model that I've been fine tuning over the last few months. And then for the images themselves, it uses Flux. So you can either use Flux Pro or Flux Schnell. Schnell means fast. That's the fast, kind of smaller, lighter weight version. By default, it uses Schnell. So we'll go ahead and go Model Pro. And then you can also do things like change the aspect ratio. So you could say aspect 16 by 9. And we'll go ahead and send this in. And you can see it starts this chat. So it says a dog driving a go-kart. And then you can see that my LLM comes back with a much better prompt. So it says, imagine a whimsical scene featuring a cheerful animated dog driving a colorful go-kart. The dog, a fluffy golden retriever with a big happy grin is perched and it's already generated the image. And it looks like something out of Mario Kart, but it's a dog driving a go-kart. This is conversational though. This is the really cool thing. So you can come in and you can say, okay, what do you like or dislike about the image now? And I can say, I want it to look more like a photo less like a cartoon, click submit, and now it's gonna rewrite the prompt for you. And you can see what it comes back with is this enhanced prompt. And now it says visualize a high resolution photorealistic scene set on a vibrant outdoor go-kart track on a sunny day. So it's completely changed the prompt, but you didn't have to know any of that. You just had to say what you like and didn't like about the image. And now you get back a different, better, higher quality image. Not quite as photorealistic as I'd like, but you can sit here and continue prompting and having this conversation with it. And once you've got something that you like, you can click on the upscale button and it takes that flux image and it sends it through the creative upscaler and gets you a much higher resolution version right here in the chat. You can see here's the upscaled version and you can even get the slider so you can see the before and after. Look at all the extra detail added to the fur. And this is again, double the resolution of the original image. 
and it's saved to my images. So if I go back over here to my images, you'll see that it's right over here. You can click and make it public. And now anyone can come in and admire this. I hope you enjoyed that. I've been really busy at work over on Pixel Dojo trying to bring the most cutting edge tools over to everybody, especially with the new cool stuff coming out from Flux. This isn't a free service. It is a monthly subscription, but I try to keep the prices as low as possible. It's $25 a month for unlimited generations. So go ahead and check it out. If you have any questions, hit me up in the Discord. I'll drop a link in the description and head over to the community gallery to see some of the amazing AI art that people are already creating with this. As always, I'm Brian. Thank you all so much. We'll check you next time.